gentlemen, you can tell we're a couple of days into practice. I'm already a little bit hoarse, uh, but it's kind of an exciting time for everybody that's involved in the coaching profession. I know we always look forward to this time of year. You kind of get an opportunity to see your team for the first time and kind of shape and mold and kind of create an identity of, of uh, what we're going to be able to put out on the field this year. Uh, <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> excuse me. We lost several good players last year, but we've got a lot of guys returning uh, at all three levels, up front, uh, outside linebacker, inside backer, and in the secondary. And, and uh, I hope we have an opportunity for these guys to kind of use their experience to um, create leadership for these younger guys. And I think we've got some really good young players that's going to uh, compete for some uh, jobs. And uh, we're kind of excited to get going. OK, we're going to open with John Cena right here at the front. Uh, John Zena with Associated Press. Uh, you, you kind of touched on this earlier, but you lost seven NFL draft picks. Some coaches don't ever coach seven NFL draft picks in their career. How big a challenge is it to replace that kind of leadership, talent, and then I have the second one? Well, I think if you, you know, in this profession, it happens every year and it happens everywhere. Uh, it really doesn't matter if they go to the NFL or they, you know, go in the workforce, you got to replace them. So um, it's something that we had to do the year before and it's been done here for a while and and it's it creates opportunities for other guys that's why they came here to have an opportunity to get on the field and compete and play and i think we've got good competition everywhere come back over here with Aaron. Aaron Suttles, Tuscaloosa News. Deron Payne, um, where, where does he need to get better and can he become, does he have the, the attributes to be a three down lineman? You know he played, uh, he played some three down all three downs last year. Uh, he's really worked hard in the off season, I think, to you know maybe get in better shape. Uh, that gives him an opportunity to do that. I think uh, with the graduation of some guys, uh, it also opens some doors for him to, to possibly uh, be more of a third down guy. Okay. Go back to Reiner in the back. Uh, you guys seem to bliss a little bit more than, say, uh, you guys did under Kirby. Uh, can you talk about that philosophy, what led you to do that? And number two, do you think that with the personnel that you have that you can do that as effectively this year? Well, I think any time you, um, you bring more than four guys, you're putting pressure on the back end, and to do that, you got to have good guys who can stand up and play man-to-man. -man. Um, you know, obviously that's where the pressure's at. We had some guys back there that had experience, and we had some guys that were good blitzers. So um, I think over the next two or three weeks, it'll kind of we'll kind of see how we develop as a team and see if that's kind of our identity this year or not. Okay, we'll come over. Alex, guys, try to keep to one question. I'll try to get back to you if we have time. Okay, I want to get make sure everybody gets a question. Jerry, Jerry, right here with Alex. I'm sorry. I want to ask you about Rashawn. Where where can he take his game to the next level now? And, and what are you kind of wanting to see from him to know, feel confident he, he, he can be that guy for you in the middle? You know, Rashawn's a really good athlete, and, and we got a group of guys that, that play inside backer that all have a unique skill set. You know, Rashawn has, I think when he first got here, he was more of an outside pass rusher, and, and we'll continue to use him in that role. But uh, to play every down, he moved inside this past year, and, and uh, he's still learning, and I, I think he's improving every day. Go back here to Rick. Hey, Jeremy. Rick Carley, Fox 6. How important is it for you to bring a kid in as a freshman three, four, five years later, just let him or allow him to leave as a complete football player? So we're talking player development, if you can talk about that. Well, I think one thing that's very unique here is if, if you guys, when you watch our, our team periods, a week two spot, and that's one thing about player development that Coach Saban does is you know, we have four teams out there, so everybody gets the same amount of reps. So nobody's sitting on the side watching, and, and I think that is unique in the fact that guys have an opportunity to develop, and you see a big difference from the time that they're freshmen to the time they're seniors. We'll come back over here with Michael. Uh, I want to ask about Terrell Lewis. Uh, what's, you know, what's he bringing, and how are those guys going to replace when you have Tim Williams and Brian Anderson that are, that are gone? How do you see those guys stepping in? You know, we got several guys uh, that's returning at outside backer that, that had an opportunity to play last year. Um, Terrell Lewis, uh, Christian Miller, Anthony Jennings. Um, so, and then we got some younger guys there. So, uh, that's why we practice. The kids are going to continue to work and, and develop. And uh, 
we'll kind of see over the next few weeks. Come back up front with Tony. Tony Sikala, BamaInsider.com. I wanted to ask about the defensive end spot. Uh, what have you seen from Isaiah Bugs and Raekwon Davis, and, and do they do they push each other uh, for that for that last spot? Well, really, we don't have any. Nobody's really plugged into any spots. I think it's one thing that's very evident here over the last ten years is Coach has what he calls a rep chart. Uh, there is no depth chart right now, so we've got eleven guys that are competing for three positions and. You know, uh, we've not even put pads on, so it's really hard to judge how defen defensive linemen is going to play without pads on. So we'll see over the next few weeks. Come back over here to Chandler in the green. Jeremy, kind of following up to that question, Coach Saban's talked about the one thing that you guys wanted to do out of the spring was develop more depth up front in the defensive line. What do those guys have to do once you put pads on to show that they earn that consistent playing time that, that you guys need? Well, I think you said it right there, consistency. You know, I think it's uh, one thing about great defenses that is very unique is they find a way to do the right thing over and over and over again. If you watch college football, um, probably every team out there plays well at certain times in the games, but who can do it over and over? And I think that's one thing that our guys have got to prove in, in the course of the next couple of weeks. Okay, we're the other side Matt. Jeremy, what have you seen from the, the summer in Maltese at linebackers so far, the combination of Van Darius, Chris Allen, and Markel Benton? And what do you think are the individual strengths for, for those three guys, what they bring to the table? Well, you know, um, who did you say again? Did you, the, all the freshmen? Well, Dylan Moses was here in the spring, so we've got 15 days with him. But the other guys, uh, during the summer, we don't watch them practice, so we're not out there with them. So basically we've had two days, so it's really hard to – you know, get a good gauge on what they can and can't do after two days. Well, in, in um, fall camp here, we've really been focusing on us. Uh, you know, I worked a year at Florida State and was very thankful for the opportunity. It was a great year. Had an opportunity to win the national championship and have a tremendous amount of respect for what they do and what they have done. Uh, but really right now, we're kind of focused on us, and that's what we'll continue to focus on for the next few weeks.